Are you a family caregiver? Are you caregiving for someone who can no longer take care of themselves? Are you overwhelmed? This is Caregiver Solutions Info with Marsha Teal. Marsha will be hosting an hour of true stories and information, tips and updates of the latest research and necessary information in the caregiving field, focusing on you, the family caregiver. An Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert, Marsha has 15 years of hands-on experience at Arden Courts, a leader in assisted living dementia communities here in the U.S. Marsha covers everything you need to know as a family caregiver, especially if you care for a loved one with Alzheimer's disease or other related dementia or chronic illness. If you have a friend or relative that is also a family caregiver, call them now. They won't want to miss a minute and let them know they can watch on caregiversolutions.info. And they can listen on WNN 1470 AM in South Florida or nationally on the iHeartRadio app. Now, sit back, relax, and learn from our host, Marsha Teal, as she brings information to you that may just be the caregiving solution you need. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Caregiver Solutions Info Show. I'm Marsha Teal, and I'm your host, and we've been bringing this show to you for over three years now, and I'm so glad that you joined us. We have another awesome program for you. This is for caregivers and for non-caregivers that want to know more about caregiving to help those that they know that are going through the caregiving journey. We bring wonderful guests onto the show, not only caregivers themselves who have walked in the shoes um, of where you're going to be trotting if you are a caregiver, but also a lot of professionals. So today we're going to be talking about something that sometimes is very misunderstood, um, something that it may ultimately come down to a service that you may need and it's good to know about it before you need it. That's what it's all about. We always tell caregivers to be prepared. Don't wait for the last minute to, to learn and to do and to seek information. So this show is all about resources for you. We're gonna be talking about hospice care. And I know a lot of people kind of cringe when they hear that word and they, it's, it's uncomfortable for a lot of people. But we're going to be talking about the ins and outs and what it is and some of the misconceptions and tell you the truth about hospice care and, and how it could be a good thing for you and your loved one. Here with me today, I have a representative from hospice, and I'm going to be introducing her now to you. Uh, I'd like you to meet uh, from VITAS Healthcare. Dr. Zul Marie Ortiz. Hi, Dr. Ortiz. Hi, Marsha. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for having us. Well, this is such an important topic to discuss, and a lot of people don't understand a lot of what sometimes um, a, a healthcare company like a hospice can provide. So we like to talk about it um, explore um, some of the issues that people sometimes don't understand uh, and get that information out to people so that they can plan if this is something that you know may come down into their life with their loved one that they're taking care of. So first of all, I want to ask you in layman's terms, um, explain what hospice is. What does a hospice do? So um, again, thank you for having us. It's such an important message to give to our community. Um, in essence, hospice is a service, a benefit uh, that we garner through Medicare. And our target is patients and families with chronic illnesses. Um, we understand that being a caretaker uh, to somebody with a chronic illness is probably the hardest job mm. that can exist out there. Um, it, it corrodes into the family dynamic. Um, sometimes there's dispute over care. And, and we recognize that and would like to facilitate that for the family. Um, there's different ways where we do this. Um, we go to where the patient is at. It could be the patient is at home or in a nursing home or in an ALF. It could also be that they're admitted in a hospital. And um, we're able to transfer the patients into units as well to stabilize them. But I think one of the biggest things of, of hospice is the different levels of care that we have. So let's say that you're a caretaker at home and it, the care is, is being, it, it's, it grows every day as uh, the functionality is hampered. 
And, you know, you used to be able to, to bathe mom, but now it's getting more difficult because she used to help you um, with the transfers, but now she's bed bound. She has Alzheimer's, so it's much harder. Um, we have aides that go to the home, depending on how much you need, you need the service, and they provide uh, the bathing. So right there, Yes. <laughs> I have a question. Go ahead. Because you're talking about going into the home um, as, a, um, as a caregiver to help the caregiver who's, who's the primary caregiver mm -hmm. and helping bathe and helping with that care. And it doesn't mean necessarily that when someone has hospice services that they're ready to die and go to heaven. No, no. And, and, and actually, I'm really glad that you pointed that out. Uh, these patients, and, and we're talking about very specific illnesses, for example, Alzheimer's, cancer, when it's, it's, it's spread, it's metastasized, when the prognosis is no longer uh, great and, and we want to be there for, for, for them. And um, specifically, um, we were talking about the bathing and all that, but um, we see that sometimes these patients are in the hospital. They're in, in an acute phase of their illness. With the Alzheimer's patients, they get a lot of infections. They have aspiration pneumonia or UTIs. And what we see is that we, we are able to help in the acuteness of that phase. Once they're at home and, 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 and we're able to provide physical therapy or things that, that would make them go back to their baseline, essentially, we are sometimes, we, we discharge them because they've rallied so much and they don't need our services anymore. <laughs> so people can actually go on hospice, get better, and then be discharged from hospice services. So I think that's a big myth out there that people, when they hear the word hospice, that they think the person must be on their way out. And mm -hmm. I think that that is a very confusing to people because when they see somebody maybe that doesn't look so sick, but they're on hospice. I think it's confusing. Why is this person on hospice if they're still, you know, in a wheelchair and they're still eating and, you know, and those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. this is really um, confusing, I think, to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And that's why we want to talk about this and about some of the services that hospice can provide, because many people might be losing out on some of the services that possibly could help them. And, and that's our driving force, right? The people that we know that, that we can help greatly, but we're unable to get there because of the negative connotation in, in, in the word hospice. And we work for that benefit every day. It, it, it should be that once we need it, um, we tap into, into that benefit and, and not uh, run away from it. And that's what we want to educate our community with. But um, just so that I, I, I really explain the levels of care, so um, let's say that that same daughter that is having difficulty bathing that mom. Right. Now mom is agitated and she's screaming and she doesn't recognize her own daughter. Mm -hmm. So now we have an uncontrolled symptom. Mm -hmm. So we have a level that we consider our ICU, which is continuous care. And at that point, because we know that it's, it's not the best thing for them to be moving them to, to the hospital and different places, we can provide LPNs and aides around the clock for our continuous care. So we have regular care, which is we, we see you, you're not that sick, so we will see you twice a, a month or once a month. Mm -hmm. Then you have continuous care. Well, a physician will see you three times a week, and there's always presence in the home until we control that symptom. Wow. We also have respite. So that same daughter that's the caretaker, she might have a daughter out of state that is having a child. But as we see with caretakers, they're, they're very much a prisoner of, of the situation and the illness. Mm -hmm. So we're able to, to place that patient in our unit, take care of them for an allotted amount of time, and you can go ahead and, 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 and continue with, with your life. And, and that's respite care. So, so it's a short-term help for that caregiver that you can provide. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Wow. That, you know, I don't know... Um, you know what people would do sometimes if they didn't get respite care they need a break it, it, you know they need to get away they need um, help it's overwhelming uh, and that's a wonderful benefit mm -hmm. now I have to say um, you're with VTOS Healthcare and you're from the Broward County the Broward County mm -hmm. organization of VTOS mm -hmm. um, so you represent um, all the uh, workers of VTOS in Broward County mm -hmm. however 
Vitas as an organization is a national company, isn't it? Definitely. Vitas is national and it was one of the first uh, hospice companies that was established. Um, the first hospice um, came in 1974 in Connecticut. And by 1976, there were already talks. And it's very interesting because it was initiated by a Methodist minister, mm -hmm. Mr. Hugh Westbrook, and Esther Cauliflower, a nurse in Miami. And they saw that there was this population of patients with chronic illnesses that we were not treating as they should. They're very, they come with complications and, and sometimes um, they, they require uh, a set of, of doctors that, that follow the, the medical complications, pain, shortness of breath, all these things that these illness uh, bring about. And they saw that we weren't catering to them. And as a result of that, in 1978, um, VITAS was established. And today it's nationwide. Wow. You know, when I hear the word hospice, I think of compassion. That's what I think of, you know, is compassionate care. Um, you mentioned that when it before it got started that people weren't being treated for some things and and maybe they were but it wasn't in a in a compassionate way either right mm -hmm. because um, it it's very difficult for people to go through these long you know illnesses and the caregiving and I think that a hospice just adds that extra layer of compassion and understanding. In, in a healthcare field. And actually, we're, we're, it's just a specialty that, that is also accompanied by palliative medicine. It's hospice and palliative medicine. And what I, is that? Explain what palliative and, medicine is. And the is. reason why I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this is because you talk about an extra layering, but palliative, it, the, the word, uh, the origin is pallium. And the Latin meaning is an extra cloak. Okay. So that's exactly what we are. We are an extra layer. So you've been seen by cardiologists, by neurologists, by all types of doctors. Mm -hmm. We go in there with compassion and try to see uh, what was missed and, and, and to cater more towards the complications that we know will come about from the illness. Mm -hmm. It's, it's about talking about the elephant in the room. Yeah, that's true. I mean, like I said earlier in the introduction of the program, sometimes people cringe when they hear that word hospice because of maybe some experience that they've had or maybe because they don't know what hospice can do for them. And so we don't want to cringe when we hear that. We want to embrace it um, because it can be a good thing. So a lot of myths, you know, regarding hospice care. So the first one we talked about that um, obviously you don't have to be on your way to heaven within a week in order to receive benefits under hospice. So we talked about that. Um, you also mentioned that uh, a person taking hospice or getting hospice services can be in almost any setting. And I think a lot of people think that if you're on hospice, you have to go into a hospice hospital or a hospice unit. Mm -hmm. But as you said before, not necessarily so. So I think more and more people now are choosing um, if they're home to stay at home. So hospice comes into the home. Mm -hmm. um, but you also mentioned that you go into nursing homes and you also go into assisted living facilities. And why would somebody want you to go into an assisted living facility. I thought, you know, um, they take care of everything. So explain what you, how you work with an assisted living facility. A great question. Um, we were actually meeting with, with uh, the administration of uh, an ALF today. And um, it's, it's tricky in the fact that if you think about it, if a patient needs hospice, then is an ALF adequate for that patient and we were actually giving them an education on on the fact that they rather than than pitch hospice what they say well this is not the facility for the patient and, and they they look to move them and what we're trying to 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 tell to to the ALS facilities and everybody really the community is that everybody that sees the need for hospice in a patient should make us aware so that we can get to to these patients and family that really needs us you you, you talk about um them not understanding the concept of hospice i've had caretakers cry to me telling me the rest of my family was telling me not to call hospice and i finally did and you're telling me that you can provide all of these things so it's mm -hmm. 
it's 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 a problem that's fixed with education yeah and um, that's a big thing i mean education is key when we're talking about this mm -hmm. um i have several more questions to okay. ask you uh this is really great but we're going to stop for a quick commercial break so we'll be right back stay with us and we'll be right back with dr ortiz Arden Courts is not just a place to live, it's a place to call home. Residential living combined with quality caregiving. This is the philosophy behind Arden Courts. Communities created exclusively for individuals with Alzheimer's disease and related dementia who would benefit from a safe and structured environment. For additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides, call 888 478 2410 to locate a community nearest you. Inquire about our educational seminars, resource library, or support groups, or simply feel free to ask questions you may have about Alzheimer's and related dementias. At Arden Courts, we know, we understand, and we can help because memory care is all we do. Remember, call 888 478 2410 for additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides. Wandering is a common problem for people with Alzheimer's or related dementias. It's also a problem for family members who care for them. Keeping them safe and secure means never letting your guard down. And even though deep down you know it's time, it hurts to have to ask for help. But it could hurt them even more if you didn't. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. The inability to recognize the obvious often occurs with Alzheimer's, particularly among the family members who care for them. Wandering is a common problem for people with Alzheimer's or related dementia. Marcia, now back to Caregiver Solutions. Welcome back to Caregiver Solutions Info. Today we're talking about hospice care. And my guest today is from Vitas Healthcare, which is a hospice here uh, in, representing Broward County. Uh, although uh, Vitas is a national organization, they have um, different uh, offices and services all across the country. And my guest today is uh, Dr. Ortiz, and she is the Associate Medical Director of Vitas Healthcare in Broward County. Um, so, Dr. Ortiz, thank you again for being here. It's, it's so good to uh, talk with you and, you know, dispel some of the, the myths and things that people don't understand about hospice. As an associate medical director, what is your role? What do you do? What do you provide? That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I pretty much uh, am all over the place regarding the county. I go to ALFs, nursing homes, and at times hospitals. But um, as a medical director, it's overviewing that our care is, is given at, at the highest uh, level. So I oversee many doctors. Um, we divide the county in teams, and each team has a, each, uh, each county has its own doctor, its own team manager. So I'm overseeing that, that the process is, is, is occurring the way that it, it should be. Okay, so you're under over quality assurance and and making patient, sure, care. patient care, yes. making sure everything is done the way it's supposed Correct. to. So that's that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that people sometimes ask is, how is hospice paid for? Is it expensive? Can I afford it? How do I um, get? How do I get hospice care? What? There's a lot of questions. So mm -hmm. um, talk to that. So uh, the way that uh, you are eligible for for hospice, it's a Medicare benefit. Uh, so if you've worked uh, and if you check your your payments, it actually tells you how much will go to Medicare. So it's, it's something that we work towards. Um, it doesn't mean that everybody that's enrolled in hospice uh, has Medicare. Mm -hmm. um, we do charity as well. Okay. Um, and um, but usually it's to it's through Medicare. There's some people that um, haven't worked in the United States, for example, uh, come from South America and, and, and are able to pay for it for the services. But there's many ways that 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 you can have the services. But usually it's through Medicare. OK, usually it's a, it's a Medicare benefit. And that's important to know. Um, so you talked about teams and you have different teams. 
what are some of the disciplines that would be on a team and how, how do their roles interact? Okay, so um, hospice and palliative medicine is a holistic approach in that we are a team. The doctor, the nurses that go see the patient, uh, we have a social work component which, which caters to the psychosocial issues and we have chaplains that, that also uh, take care of the spiritual aspect. An example is a, a patient can have pain uh, originating from a breast cancer to the spine. As a physician, I can give you the medications that, that will probably ameliorate that. But if you're a mom of three and you're trying to figure out who's going to take care of my children, I could treat the pain, but that's a psychosocial, spiritual aspect, and that requires counseling. So we work as a team to see what are the needs of, of, of that patient at that time. Um, it, it's, it's important to say that all of us uh, kind of uh, have some understanding of, of, of the social work part. If we're not with somebody or with a chaplain for the spiritual part, we, we can do some of it, um, but we work as a team. And, 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 and the best thing that I can do for that patient that has metastatic breast cancer is, is tell my chaplain, um, I need you to pay a visit because there are concerns and the social worker as well. Mm -hmm. um, we're worried about the children. Are they in counseling? So we really cater to the patient and family through this journey. You know, and, and that's another thing that I think people don't understand is that hospice services are not just for the patient, but it's a benefit for the entire family, right? So you mentioned the children. I mean, the children sometimes you know, are devastated when there's, you know, a death that's, you know, coming up in the family and they don't understand sometimes. Um, spouses, you know, they need that support. So um, hospice, again, instead of that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of feeling, it's like, let's open up, let's open our mind and embrace this mm -hmm. and see what it can do mm -hmm. for us, not to us. Definitely. And you, and you touched on, on the children and, and, I think one of the things that is great about uh, hospice is the fact that we provide bereavement one year after your loved one passes. Yes, and we're going to be um, actually talking to one of your bereavement managers Definitely. in a few minutes, Definitely. and we're going to talk all about that. So on the team, we have nurses, you have caregivers or aides or, mm -hmm. you know, um, people that do hands-on, mm -hmm. right? Um, you have doctors, mm -hmm. you have social workers, and sometimes I think you even have um, some therapists, right? Like music, music therapy. therapy. Yeah, talk Definitely. a little bit about that. Definitely. So we have a music therapy program, and what we see is that sometimes when the traditional route doesn't work, like the medication for the pain, we've sent the social worker, we've sent the chaplain, Sometimes something as simple as, as having somebody playing the guitar, uh, your favorite songs, decreases pain, makes the symptoms better, and all around their quality of life is, is best. And, and you can say that about aromatherapy and then different interventions of the sort that we're able to do meditation. Wow. So all of that is something that you can offer to the patient. Mm -hmm. And I think that what you just said is, is key quality, right? Quality, quality of life. They're still here. Mm -hmm. And we want quality of life all the way through to the end, if, you know, if, if possible. And I think that's very, very important. Um, it is um, difficult for families, you know, mm -hmm. to be going through this. Mm -hmm. um, so if somebody uh, is listening and they are thinking, gee, I didn't know that, right? And I need to know more. I want to learn more. Or if someone has a loved one who is not doing well, right? Mm -hmm. And they're thinking maybe I should investigate to see if hospice services would be good for us. Mm -hmm. How do they do that? Do they do they just call? Do they have to talk to their primary care physician first? Mm -hmm. how, how does that work? So we have availability via phone. Um, we are a 24 seven service um, that you can contact us and we can set up a, a, a meeting for, for either a nurse uh, or a doctor, whoever is needed at that time, to give some counseling on, on the service. And, and we're able to do that. Um, so you don't need a referral first in order to call? So ideally, okay. we need a, a referral to, to give the service, but sometimes it's families who are requesting information and, and we don't need a referral for that. We'll go and give them the information and we also have a website that 
kind of says what, all the services that we are able to provide. Okay. And that website is vtos.com? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Great. So families can actually, um, you know, on their own call, look up the information, and maybe they just want to talk to somebody to to find out if it's something that they should even consider. Sure. Yeah, I okay. think that's very, very important. Um, Marsha, you mentioned children, and I just wanted to touch on that. Um, sure. We also have a, a children's camp where kids can go with peers that have experienced loss. Mm. And that's, uh, I, I've seen this, and it's transcendental. It's, it's, they are able to do a campfire and, 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 and just uh, they lift uh, some floating uh, um, candles and uh, are able to just be with their peers and, and who know what they've experienced. And yeah, it's very, very healing. Because um, children, you know, they, other children sometimes just can't relate to what they're going through. And I think that's another really, really good benefit. And I know even for children, for grandchildren, right, who have lost grandparents even, mm -hmm. is something that they could take advantage of this. So really, um, the hospice services that VTOS provides are really for everybody, uh, depending upon their circumstance and their need. Absolutely everybody. Well, I thank you mm -hmm. so much for being here, for explaining all about the VTOS services. Um, you know, we we all need that to, to be more aware and I think if the the caregivers are out there and they're aware and they can you know have that conversation um, and it doesn't have to be s something that you're afraid of to talk about Definitely, yeah I agree and, and we're more than happy to provide the service for our community and we know that it's very tough to to live through the through a chronic illness like this and we just want to help Yes, that's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you again. We're going to take a commercial break, and we'll be back with more information from VTOS about hospice services. So stay with us. The inability to recognize the obvious often occurs with Alzheimer's, particularly among the family members who care for them. When the time comes for you to decide that someone you love needs more help than you can give, Will you be able to recognize it? Don't wait for a crisis to make the decision for you. Talk to us. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. Wandering is a common problem for people with Alzheimer's or related dementias. It's also a problem for family members who care for them. Keeping them safe and secure means never letting your guard down. And even though deep down you know it's time, it hurts to have to ask for help. But it could hurt them even more if you didn't. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. Being unable to recognize the obvious often occurs with Alzheimer's or related dementias even among their caregivers. When the time comes for you to decide that someone you love needs more help than you can give, will you be able to recognize it? Don't wait for a crisis. Solutions.info. If you have a question or wish to share a story, call into the show at 888-565-1470 and talk with Marsha. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. Welcome back. I'm glad you could join us today. I'd like to take this opportunity now to thank our national sponsor, Arden Courts Memory Care Community. Arden Courts has about 50 communities across the United States. They have actually here in Florida 10, uh, in Palm Beach County 2, and, hos and uh, the, we work with the hospices, and we're talking about hospice today. So I want to let you know that Arden Courts cares about the caregiver also. And you have an opportunity today to get a wonderful resource from Arden Courts. This is a book. It's called The 36-Hour Day. I can't say enough good about this book. It's a great resource, a great tool for caregivers. It explains dementia, Alzheimer's. It explains um, differences in different types of dementia. It's a really good tool for, for caregivers. And if you're a caregiver, it doesn't have to always be about um, a, a dementia type of diagnosis. Caregiving is a lot of it overlaps to any kind of care, whether it's um, you know a cancer or any other kind of illness. Um, caregivers have it tough. And anything you can do to 
educate yourself and help others is a wonderful thing to do. So I'd like to uh, invite you to call Art and Courts on their toll-free line, which is 888-478-2410 to get this book absolutely free. And again, 888-478-2410. Let them know that you heard about the offer on the Caregiver Solutions Info Show, and they'll be happy to get your name and address and make sure that they mail a copy of this book absolutely free right to you. So we're talking about hospice care, and we have invited VTOS here today, and VTOS is a hospice. Uh, we are talking to a team out of Broward County, uh, the Broward County team of VTOS, and VTOS is a national organization. And there's a lot of things that people don't know about hospice care, and we're explaining all of those today. Now we're going to be switching gears a little bit. We talked to the Associate Medical Director, Dr. Ortiz, and now with me is Chaplain Mitch Hussar. Hi, Chaplain. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you for coming. This is something that uh, we want to talk about because obviously it, when people are um, going on to a hospice, right, um, we talked about compassionate care yep. and we talked about being there for the family. So you're a chaplain and you're actually the bereavement services manager for VTOS. As that position, what is your role? What do you do? Thank you for having us. It's a privilege. Uh, we, uh, my job is to coordinate the BIRMA services that the program offers to uh, the patients, the families, and also to the community because we have a mission to be available to the community at large, Broward County, um, and uh, basically we provide uh, services through uh, BIRMA phone calls. When the person passes away, one of our patients, we reach out uh, within uh, uh, two or three days to call the family to extend uh, condolences. Uh, we send a condolence card, we send condolence letters, we send literature, as Dr. Ortiz mentioned, for 12 months. We keep in touch with the families. We invite them to attend support groups that we have. We have about 30 grief support groups uh, throughout the county. And uh, we try to be available also for one-on-one -on -one counseling for complicated cases. Wow, that's a lot. Now, I have to say, um, I know about your um, reaching out, and I know about your continuous um, com conversations right. and and contact with the families because um, unfortunately my mother passed away about oh. a year and a half ago. Condolences. But she thank you. But she was under VTOS care here in Broward County, and uh, I did receive at my home the phone calls. I did receive the newsletters with all the information, uh, the support, the uh, invitations to support groups. Yes, and it did continue for a whole year. Yeah. And uh, I just thought that was very good uh, because sometimes people, when um, someone, someone passes that right. you love, right, um, sometimes you're almost in like a denial yep. that, that it, it hasn't happened. And you're almost like in shock. And you might not need anybody right then because you don't think you do. Right. But sometimes this hits you later down the road, right? And then if it does you have the resources and the information right at your fingertips provided to you on an ongoing basis. And Absolutely. I think that's wonderful. Absolutely. You, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly the term we use in grief counseling. Uh, it's a state of shock and numbness. And people, it takes about three months for people to really get in touch with their feelings. The first three months after the loss, people are busy with, uh, uh, obviously, a funeral or memorial service, uh, taking care of the paperwork and the state and all that. So three months later, they finally realize this has happened. I'm without my wife, or I'm without my husband, uh, or I'm without my dad, or without my mom. So uh, the calls come come in usually after three months, and they reach out to us in response to our uh, literature and such and ask for help. Yeah, that's awesome. I think, too, that um, when someone reaches out, I, I think that sometimes they don't even know that they need help. Isn't yeah. it usually maybe a friend or a family member that sees something in that person yeah. that's still not quite yeah. right yeah. and they actually recognize yeah. it yeah. before the, the person does yeah. that's experiencing this? Yeah. Have yeah. you had that happen? We do, we do, and uh, uh, we, we take the call and I usually ask uh, if uh, they are calling uh, for themselves or they're calling for somebody else and that's very common actually. 
and I ask if they have received permission from the person who is grieving to um, have this uh, good friend reach out to us, and they, they usually say yes, or they say, I'm just calling to ask for more information. So I usually would try to talk to the person, because if the person is not ready to receive help, then our uh, outreach is basically for not. So. Yes, that's true. Now, how long have you been um, a chaplain with the hospice organization? Um, right after I graduated from seminary and I did my chaplaincy school at University of Miami in 1999, I was hired by VITAS and I've been working ever since. It's a wow. privilege. Wow, long time. Yeah, yes. 17 years, yeah. almost 18. Long yeah. time. Well, you're, yeah. you're, you're with me. I've been with Arden Courts for 17 years, so <laughs> I'm, right, I'm right there with you. So yeah. when you find your calling, right, yeah, you stick calling. with it. Yeah. 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 So um, as a chaplain, are you the one that that counsels with the family you you do the prayers or what if there's something else that they need that is not within your realm how does that work out what can you do to help well we uh, in chaplaincy we talk about the mystery of presence so we want to be there for people for patients for families for staff like dr ortiz mentioned nursing homes or assisted living facility or hospital staff we are there for them as well so we are working hard to bring a ministry of presence, compassionate presence uh, for the uh, people I mentioned. And if, for example, we have a patient who is a uh, Roman Catholic, I am a Protestant minister, I always reach out to a Catholic priest uh, in the parish and uh, the Catholic Church is wonderful, responding very promptly to send a priest or sometimes Eucharistic minister to administer the, uh, they don't call them uh, last rites anymore, but uh, the anointing of the sick. Uh, if the person is, for example, Jewish, Obviously, we, we want to honor the uh, Jewish faith as well, and we invite a rabbi to come, and we work with, we have actually two rabbis on staff, and we reach out to the rabbis in the community, and they come and they provide the service uh, for the people of the people of the Jewish faith. But the chaplain is trained to be able to understand multiple faiths, and uh, the ministry is actually interfaith, so we are able to uh, read the prayer in, in Hebrew, for example, it's always more beneficial, I feel, for the family to receive uh, spiritual care for the pers- from the clergy of their own tradition. And that's wonderful that you can <clears throat> provide that. So do. it doesn't we matter do. what religion you are, or even if you don't have a religion, right. you're going to be comforted by, Correct. by the, the chaplain-type care that, Correct. that VITAS can provide. That's wonderful. Right. Um, so last question, if someone's listening to us and... They're thinking, wow, that's kind of um, kind of sad and discouraging because you're talking about uh, grief and talking to them about um, what has happened after their loved one passes. Right. But is there something that they can do prior to that? Do you have any role in being with the family to prepare them for yeah. what's to come? Right. We do, actually. Um, when I used to visit in the field, I visited for about seven years as a chaplain. I attended at least 1,000 deaths in seven years. Uh, we tried to, uh, I used to teach the families to uh, uh, do what we call gratitude visit, uh, to take a piece of paper and to write uh, the top 10 things for which they are grateful for the person who was uh, about to transition into the afterlife. And that helps tremendously, first, uh, uh, the family to say their goodbye, because people usually are in a state of limbo, they don't know what to say, what to do, even people who have a lot of education, it's a new experience for them. Mm-hmm. It's also helpful for the dying person, you know, say if it's a mother dying, the mother wants to know if she was a good mom to mm-hmm. her family. So if the children express gratitude or uh, the husband, uh, it's very important. And uh, it's important for us as well to know that we uh, reach out to the people and we are able to guide them uh, to make this uh, as palatable or as easy as possible. It's a tough time, obviously. Yeah, I like that, the gratitude list, sure. and that helps with that easing yep. into the final yeah. you know, end of life with right. gratitude to be more uh, appreciative and, and more loving toward yep. and feeling those feelings um, to transition because a lot of people, you're right, they don't know what to say or what right. to do, and I think that gives them a focus. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. that's wonderful. Well, thank you for being here right. with us today. I appreciate everything that you do and, sure. and keep doing it. Sure, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having us. Oh, it was awesome. Thank you. So uh, we're going to take a last commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to hear more from the VTOS team in Broward County, so stay with us.
The inability to recognize the obvious often occurs with Alzheimer's, particularly among the family members who care for them. When the time comes for you to decide that someone you love needs more help than you can give, will you be able to recognize it? Don't wait for a crisis to make the decision for you. Talk to us. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. Wandering is a common problem for people with Alzheimer's or related dementias. It's also a problem for family members who care for them. Keeping them safe and secure means never letting your guard down. And even though deep down you know it's time, it hurts to have to ask for help. But it could hurt them even more if you didn't. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. Feelings of depression, isolation, and frustration are common among persons living with Alzheimer's or related dementias. It's common among those who care for them, too. It takes a lot of patience and courage. It also takes knowing when you can no longer do it alone. At Arden Courts, memory care is all we do. Talk to us. We know. We understand. We can help. Don't let guilt keep you from making the right decision. Visit arden-courts.com. Arden Courts follows Equal Housing Opportunity Guidelines. Care expert on caregiversolutions.info. If you have a question or wish to share a story, call into the show at 888-565-1470 and talk with Marsha. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. Welcome back to Caregiver Solutions. Today we're talking about hospice care and all the things that people really need to know about hospice care and maybe we're afraid to ask. So we're bringing all that information to you to educate and to dispel a lot of the myths. We've talked to Dr. Ortiz, who is the Associate Medical Director at Vitas Healthcare in Broward County. And then we also spoke to Chaplain, uh, Chaplain Mitch Hussar, who talked about bereavement services and, and how that can help a family even before someone passes. So it's all good. And speaking of good, our last segment now, we're going to be talking about volunteering. And it's always good to volunteer. So with me to talk about that, also from VTOS Healthcare, is Esther Cohen. Esther is the Volunteer Services Manager uh, at the Broward County VTOS. And she is joined by uh, her volunteer, Wendy Levine. And hello, Esther, and hello, Wendy. Hello, hello Marcia. <laughs> so let's talk about volunteering. Um, why does VTOS have volunteers? We talked about teams with all mm -hmm. the medical component, but why volunteers? Well, Marcia, volunteers is a very essential part of the interdisciplinary team, as Dr. Ortiz and Mitch had discussed with you before. So volunteers are just regular, ordinary people, just with a big heart Aww. and they're there to help the caregivers help the patient give them a hand just be just do whatever they need just to be a friend yeah because you know a lot of people that go through um this you know experience mm -hmm. sometimes they don't have family local sometimes they don't have friends because their friends have actually um gone by the wayside because they just disappear on them they don't mm -hmm. know what to do um, they're kind of alone sometimes yes. and even though you have the other team members they're more on the medical side Correct. right yeah so by having a volunteer who's let's say been there done that mm -hmm. i think that it could be very comforting to somebody yes. saying that gee you really understand you you've walked mm -hmm. in my shoe and you understand what i'm going through you couldn't have said it better oh yeah. um so wendy why are you a volunteer for vitas i used vitas for both my parents when they were passing and vitas was so incredibly supportive to me not just to my parents where they they did an excellent job taking care of my parents but the nurses, the aides, the social workers, you know, every single person that came in contact with either of my parents also made sure that they made contact with me, that they made sure I was okay through this process. And I thought that um, as a caregiver, you know, as being a caregiver before, that I wanted to give back to VITAS because of the wonderful things they did for me. Well, that's wonderful. Giving back is always so great. And, 
you know, I love our volunteers in, in any capacity, mm -hmm. you know, that they have the heart for it. So what kind of volunteering opportunities can you provide as the manager of that department? Okay. Well, we have different various um, parts to the volunteer department. So you could be a volunteer as a, in the administrative area. So for those that want to do things behind the scenes, help with the charts, help with, you know, doing the folders for admissions behind the scenes, they're so important, especially for events and upcoming programs that we need assistance. Um, we also have patient care coordinators and uh, I mean patient care volunteers, excuse me, and they're the ones that actually go visit the patients. So they're, you know, as Wendy was, you know, visiting patients and um, giving them a hand and, you know, just, you know, doing things that they would love, you know, whether just talking about their family life, talking about, you know, what they're doing now, talking about so current it's more events. Like socializing, a social visit. Exactly. You're not expected to do anything medical or any kind of oh, hands on, no. <laughs> but it's a, it's a social visit and to, to talk and, and, you know, maybe you can make somebody laugh, you know, exactly. maybe you can uh, create some uh, memories that, that uh, they remember by talking about what happened in the past and bringing those things mm -hmm. to life. And that gives comfort to people. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a thing called life history where they can actually review their life and talk about it. And these are things that you could leave as a legacy for their families as well. That's so, awesome. Yes, it's so a wonderful thing. A lot of things to do. What? Um, how long have you been volunteering? About well, three years. Three years. Wow. So, um, not to put you on the spot, but go on. Um, go ahead. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, can you recall some special volunteering um, day or a time that really stands out in your mind of that really made? A difference either for you or for the patient that you could talk about without naming names? I think every single encounter I've had has made a difference. I've done served ice cream to people in nursing homes for I can't even remember what was the holiday you know I think it was 4th of July you know my husband and I served ice cream in nursing homes I have done um, meditation with patients um, and their spouses and families in their homes that have, you know, helped them be more calm and relaxed and able to cope better. Um, <clears throat> I've stuffed bags full of goodies for people to take with them, you know, that they, the marketing people give out. Uh, I can't even think of all the things I've done. I've worked with caregiver support groups doing meditation. Um, my last patient um, happened to be one of my neighbors Aww. and that I already knew him and so I would um, he he loved to tell life stories and his kids were there, you know his son and daughter-in-law were there and they were just they stories they had never heard before but I was in his age group so he you know he talked about things that we both could relate yeah, to. Yeah could relate to that that's wonderful. And they all laughed. Yeah so do you um, have certain days or times uh, that you must volunteer or is it whenever you can? Is, is it up to you of how often or how um, frequent that you do this volunteering? There are minimums, but I've never even asked what the minimum was because my feeling is the more I can give, the better off everybody is. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you, Wendy. Um, so talk about that, um, Esther, about volunteering and, and opportunities and how does somebody get involved if they want to give back? Well, first off, uh, anyone that's interested could always call us at VITAS in Broward. The number is 954-777-5396. Uh, and someone will always be there, myself or my coordinators. And um, so the other way is that we do have mailings uh, where we are having orientation and our next orientation is on Friday, March 23rd. And so, you know, we do have- That's to, for the volunteers. For the volunteers. Okay. So every volunteer has to go through orientation. You know, there is uh, a requirement. We do a background check and we also do a TB test. So that's for the patient care coordinators.
Okay. And so definitely if anyone has any interest or wants more information, please reach out. It is so vitally important. Um, we also have student, you know, students coming for community service hours. Really? And so I know many people out in the community, their, their children need hours. So, you know, we welcome them. And obviously, you know, they may do more of the administrative, mm -hmm. but on occasion due to maturity, they may come into a more clinical setting. Wow, that's wonderful. So you can never have too many volunteers, right? Never. We also have volunteers that do sewing and they do knitting and crocheting. So we make beautiful lap robes and um, booties for the patients. Mm -hmm. We also, as you know, we do memory bears that um, this is a wonderful thing for those that have never seen it before. I, I wish I brought one, actually, I should have. Mine's in the making, <laughs> right? And but that's I, actually how we met, because right. I happened to learn about the memory bears uh, that since my mom was under VTOS mm -hmm. care in Broward, I was able to bring articles of clothing that she that's wore right. that we remember her wearing and bring them to you, to your department for your volunteers, and then they cut and sew those pieces of clothing into a cute little teddy bear. A beautiful teddy bear that they could always, the you know, the family could always look back and remember their loved one. And they're actually, they feel like they're there with them. And it's very special. That is awesome. Um, you know, people don't sew a lot these days, so I hope that you never run out of volunteers that can yeah. sew because, you know, you, you think about it, it's almost like a lost art people totally. yeah true. sew by hand or on a machine mm -hmm. and and so i hope that uh, yep. you do find volunteers that if you're crafty and you like mm -hmm. to put things together and sew and if you don't sew they probably can stuff right totally. <laughs> <laughs> stuff bears or stuff envelopes yeah. right? so we're calling out for all the sewers and the knitters and the crocheters yeah we also have another great program called the poor pal program what's that about so those are for our friendly cats and dogs and all other animals. I understand, you know, some people love to have their bunny rabbits come visit them or lizards. It's a little bit something out of my comfort zone. But <laughs> I'll stick to the dogs and the cats. But we're calling on all the dogs and cats. And basically, you know, it's it's been shown that human nature, you know, we humans love to have be felt cuddled by and they feel the love of an animal. Yes. And so we actually need um, animals. Those that are, you know, they come for an interview. <laughs> they do? You yes. have to interview the animals yes, too? Yes, they Make do. sure that they we, get they, along with people. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we have them walk through our our department and in, in our office at the commercial office and they visit all the employees and we see how they interact. It's a wonderful thing. And so the owners of these animals then, once they pass the test, can go visit people on hospice to bring joy to them through animals if that's something that totally. that person likes yes and the actually the owner would be a volunteer as well so it would have to go through the orientation yeah but the only thing is is for the uh for the pet they will also have to be current with their rabies shots and immunization so we do need to have documentation from their vet so besides cats and dogs have you really had other kind of animals for for therapy animals yes i have heard i'm new in this role but i heard that we've had bunnies and we've had lizards well yes. <laughs> i i don't like to pet lizards but if that is that's your thing you know then that's good maybe turtles too i think uh -huh. but whatever makes someone happy but as you know it just gives such warmth and joy it puts a smile in everyone's face when yeah. you go into a home, you know, personal home or into a facility or a hospital. It lights up everyone's that's eyes. That's wonderful. Yeah. So the person that's going to be getting a volunteer into their home, they know that volunteer is coming? Absolutely. So yes. you kind of introduce them before they get there? Yes. So, so they know who to expect and what they're a little bit about? Yeah, so basically how that works is the team, as was mentioned before, the social worker or the chaplain or the team manager, they would actually send a plan of care to the volunteer department. And so there is proper protocol that has to go through. And then we actually assign a, you know, a volunteer to, a, to the patient. 
Uh-huh. So and whatever is appropriate, the team knows that person already, and you can then kind of judge who would be a good fit. Right. I love and, that. And we try to keep them within the same uh, vicinity of where the where the volunteer lives. Right. Like 10, 15 minutes from where the patient. Yes. So they actually choose who they would like to go and make sure it's a good fit. That's wonderful. Yeah. They, they post a list uh -huh. of the patients that are want volunteers uh -huh. and they email it to you and you can pick which one oh, you want. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so to talk again basis. about the uh, phone number before we end our show, we want sure. to give that phone number well, out thank again. Thank you, Marcia. Yeah, so the phone number is 954-777-5396. Um, well, thank you both for coming today. It was thank a pleasure to meet us. both of you. Thank you. Uh, if you want more information, you can visit vitas.com and look up everything there. And if you want to talk to someone, then uh, give them a call. They're very happy to talk with you and answer all your questions. And I want to thank you for joining us today also and, and being part of this uh, awesome program. Um, we'll be back next time, which is every Tuesday uh, from 5 to 6 Eastern Standard Time, same place, same time. In the meantime, don't forget, give somebody a hug because they need it and so do you, right? You know yes, about that one. Absolutely. Day. Thank you and take care. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us for this week's Caregiver Solutions with Marsha Teal. Join us next week as Marsha, who has 15 years of Alzheimer's disease and dementia care experience, brings you more needed information to help with the care of your loved one. This show can be seen again on caregiversolutions.info and questions can be left on the site, which may be used on the program to help others. See you next week for more Caregiver Solutions. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts operated serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954 717 7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 2009096. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Amp2.tv presents You and Your Doctor, teaching you to live a longer and healthier life. Proudly sponsored by All County Healthcare, where people are the heart of our business. All County Healthcare is a Medicare certified agency where one call will service all your home care health needs. For more information, call 954-717-7027 or visit our website, allcountyhealthcare.com. Now, let's get informed to living a longer and healthier life. Here is your host for today's show. Hello, South Florida and beyond, and welcome to the You and Your Doctor show, Living a Longer and Healthier Life, Tuesday, March 27th. Boy, we're ripping through March. That's awesome. It's been a great year so far on the show. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, general surgery this evening and, and ER and the emergency room as well, but we're going to talk about a med spa that's opening here in Fort Lauderdale that you're going to want to know about because the amount of treatments, aesthetics, and the product line is just amazing. Uh, before I just get started, I want to let you always know that we're on Facebook Live. So you can just type in All County Healthcare, INC, and you can watch us Facebook Live. Another great thing about Facebook is um, you can see all the shows there. So if you miss anything tonight, you can always go back there. And of course, the sponsors of the show, All County Healthcare, a uh, great um, local Palm Beach, Broward, and Miami Dade Medicare certified home agency. Um, so if you have any questions, you can check out their website, allcountyhealthcare.com. Again, all of the shows 
um, that we've done on, well, it's Tuesday 6 to 7 now, and Friday 5 to 6 are on allcountyhealthcare.com. So um, check that out. I'll give some information on how to get in touch with them um, throughout the show. And um, we have the commercials playing as well. So um, without further ado, I want to welcome back to the show. He's never been on the air with me, but he's been on the show many times. Dr. Frank Wittenberger. Dr. Wittenberger, welcome to the program. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So glad to be here, David. Thank you for coming aboard on um, this adventure of health. Cause that's what I always tell the viewers and listeners because we're always learning so many new things. And I, I know you as a doctor, you're always on the latest in medical technology. But to bring it to the public, uh, people just love this show. So I'm really happy that they can get their health information here. Now, um, You've had quite a career before South Florida and then now in South Florida as well. But um, I want to talk a little bit about um, your your um, your resume a little later, but I want to get right into the med spa. So this is um, the living or actually living well med spa and it's going to be opening in Fort Lauderdale in April. Is that correct? So we should be open. Yeah, within the next couple of weeks. And so. We're located right in Fort Lauderdale, just north of Commercial, 5200 North Federal Highway, um, and uh, right on the east side of, of uh, Federal Highway. Love that area. Not far from right here, the Boca Studio. I mean, that's like a, on a good day, 30-minute <laughs> drive, if that. Well, we'll... we'll We'd like to see you. You're welcome to visit whenever you want. Just shoot right down Federal Highway South. Now, um, what types of uh, unique experience can and expertise? I mean, you're a, you study general surgery and you actually practice general surgery, correct? Yes. So what kind of, um, from a general surgery standpoint, what kind of, um, you know, techniques, experience can you bring to a med spa? I know you were talking a little in the green room about some of the, the treatments you're able to do with PRP, but it's important to have a certified uh, physician doing any kind of injection, injections, right? Right. You know, and I think, um, you know, you bring kind of your ex your whole experience with you no matter what venture you do. And, and really, I, you know, I've been looking for finding the, you know, the next opportunity in terms of, you know, what, what kind of works for my my life and what works for you know what what clients are looking for so you know I think you bring that experience and uh, you know certainly being a surgeon having that background is is useful in terms of you know understanding kind of the dynamics of, of working with with patients as well as uh, you know really having experience in working with you know injections and working you know in, in tissue management and uh, understanding kind of how the subcutaneous tissues work and and you know how um, the you know kind of what the structures you're dealing with with do um and in that sense you know really you bring that all that experience in terms of what you're doing and it really varies you know florida has been fairly um restrictive in terms of you know who's doing injectables and and dermal fillers but throughout the country you know really you have yeah there you have to be concerned and, and question who is who's giving your treatments now in florida by law, only physicians or nurse practitioners can actually give um, dermal dermal fillers or Botox, you know, by the by their own selves, um, mm -hmm. you know, without supervision. So, uh, really, you know. But that being said, you know, you really have to question, you know, the level of experience. Make sure you're getting somebody who understands, um, you know, kind of what what you're doing. And and that being said, you know, there are certain things that you know we're doing that that you know are not we're never going to replace plastic surgeons in terms of some of the surgical procedures that are going to be done you know there's always going to be a need for for facelifts or blepharoplasties do you know mm -hmm. doing your eyelids those sorts of procedures are not you know there's only so much you know non-surgical approaches to aesthetics will will cure um but what i think we do offer is we offer you know we bring that whole experience you know so it's not just a doctor's office visit that you're getting you know we want to bring the whole experience and we really want to find out what what clients what patients feel is important so that they can kind of determine you know it's what bothers them it's not what when I look at somebody and say geez you know this is X Y and Z mm -hmm. you know you know it's it's really but it's funny you know I mean everybody has their own perception that you'd say you know and sometimes it's things that you know I would never you know I or you would never notice and then yet by the same token when you when you know it's something that they look at they wake up every day they say geez that really bothers me you know the way that that wrinkle around my eye is or that mm -hmm. you know Whatever it is, you know, so the little veins in my leg that, you know, that bother me. So, you know, all those things that, that uh, you know, people have. So we're looking to kind of 
find ways to 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 help people you know find them best their best selves and so uh you know in that sense it's it's not just um, you know, that we're going to do X, Y, and Z. But we really want to, you know, find out from the community what, you know, what areas, you know, they see as important or, or would fit their, fit their needs. And so, you know, one of the things, one of the areas that really, you know, since we've been going through this process of opening is, is uh, to have, um, you know, to, to look at doing hormone replacement therapies because that's, you know, there's been a demand, particularly, you know, where, where I live in Wilton Manors, you know, I've had a number of the guys ask me about, you know, doing testosterone replacement therapy and, you know, looking at that as, as a treatment, you know, because we're looking at kind of what, you know, overall wellness and really, you know, kind of giving a, a better, you know, kind of holistic approach. And, and really, you know, it's a lot different than, you know, surgery in some ways too, because, you know, with general surgery, you're doing, you know, most of it's people who need surgery now and they don't have a choice or they, you know, they come to you because they, they don't have um, you know, a choice as to, you know, it needs to be done. And so this is kind of completely different where people are coming and saying, you know, they do have a choice. And so you've got to be able to, to provide that, you know, the quality of the, the treatment and also the quality of the experience so that, that people are satisfied and they keep coming back. Definitely. Yeah, it's definitely ele elective, which, um, you know, as in your career, you know, when you were a general surgeon, yeah, those are things that had to be done or else, you know, some of them I imagine were life and death. So this is a much, much different, more elective. And I like uh, some of the, the, the points you just made there. Well, all of the points, but some of them um, were, were really right on. Um, obviously, we're here in South Florida. I mean, uh, image is a lot. I know I'm in the PR world and um, it can be tough. Um you got to uh, dress and play the part sometimes um, just to, to get it done. So image is huge. We're always on the beach. We're in the water. Uh, we're on the boat. So as well. And then you made a, a great point. Um, you know, we are the best expert of ourselves. We're seeing ourselves in the mirror every day. And if you're not happy with yourself, I mean, that can cause a whole bunch of uh, different problems, make you kind of second guess as well. And if it's something that, you know, you have the means to do, why not, you know? And the third, baby boomers. Wow, they look great, but they are they are aging at a, at a fast rate. And uh, obviously they're working longer and want to keep, um, you know, that image as well, keep them looking as, as good as they, they can. So I think it's great. And I'm going to give out your web, uh, website a bunch of times because I think it's great, livingwellmedspa.com. I love how you put the prices on there because I think as a consumer, I mean, that's what we're looking for. We want to know on there, you yeah, know? And I do think that's important. You know, I think that, you know, having transparency in terms of pricing is, is you know, very important. You know, I was actually just over at, uh, you know, had a doctor's appointment. I was talking to the nurse uh, when I was there and she said, you know, she went to a provider who, you know, and she said she didn't even know what it was going to cost until it was done. And, you know, it kind of came as a surprise to her. And so, you know, I think that that way we can, you know, we can work with people. We want, you know, kind of to, to provide, a, you know, a reasonable deal, uh, you know, and, and really to make it uh, so that, you know, people understand, you know, upfront what, what the pricing is and what it's going to cost. And, and um, you know, again, that being said, we want to try and make it, you know, very accessible and, and, and you know, try and pass along, you know, the, the opportunities we have in terms of pricing. Um, but it is, it is a, you know, a competitive marketplace, um, you know, and there's certainly fixed costs that you just, you know, that limit, you know, kind of how low you can go, so. Yeah, especially in South Florida. I mean, it, it's a competitive market. But I want to tell you, I've never um, myself gone for that kind of um, elective treatment that you have on your website. And there, you got to take a look at the website, um, folks. There's so many different areas of interest. Uh, Dr. Frank Wittenberga is introducing at Living Well uh, Med Spa. But I thought it was all reasonable, to be honest with you, on my salary. I thought it was very reasonable. <laughs> So I was a little surprised, to be honest with you. Right. So that's and, great. And, you know, again, I think it depends on the treatments, you know, in terms of how durable they are. Um, generally, when you're looking at, you know, uh, neurotoxin treatments with, with botulinum, uh, you know, generally around three months is a reasonable expectation in terms of how long that's going to last. None, of, You know, essentially none of the treatments are, are permanent um, that we're going to be, you know, doing, but... But uh, but they do, you know, the dermal fillers tend to have a, a lifespan of six to nine months in terms of, you know, how long something like that would last. Um, and so those are basically, they're hyaluronic acid, which is a glycosaminoglycan. They're, they're kind of naturally occurring in your skin. And so they get absorbed eventually over time. But they help, 
kind of to replace what your body has, you know, normally, you know, as we age, we tend to have decreases in, in the subcutaneous fat, in the glycosaminoglycans, and in the collagen levels. And so a lot of the treatments, you know, in terms of facial rejuvenation and uh, are geared towards how can we re elevate those, you know, those kind of the textures in, in your in your skin and give it more of a, you, you know, younger looking uh, appearance. And so to do that, you know, a lot of it, you know, when we look at things like doing a chemical peel, you know, really that kind of exfoliates the top layer, the, the corneum stratum of the epithelium. And so once you can take that away, then you have, you know, the ability to access the, um, you know, the lower layers to get, you know, the treatments in there. You know, I mean, a lot of products that you'll buy off the shelf, you know, if you go to your local pharmacy or you go to, you know, your local department store and look at the products, the formulations, you know, make it difficult for them to get where they need to be. And and so in the preparation and, you know, oftentimes the concentration are just not kind of what, you know, what you need in terms of a cosmeceutical, in terms of being able to, to really penetrate and rejuvenate the skin. So, you know, Things like facial peels, um, uh, the uh, dermapen, uh, the the micro needling. Um, right now, we'll be using the skin pen. The skin pen is the uh, uh, only FDA approved micro needling uh, pen. And what that does is it creates channels in the in the superficial layers of the skin to allow for for um, for uh, treatments to to reach down. So you know you can repl replenish. Uh, the collagen or replenish the, you know, glycosaminoglycans and or to get antioxidants in, into the lower skin level so that they can kind of help rejuvenate the skin. We're talking Botox, cellulite therapy, um, chemical peels, derma fillers, fillers. <laughs> got that one. And then a whole bunch of else with uh, Dr. Frank Wittenberger here. He's opening a Living Well Med Spa in um, Fort Lauderdale, right on Federal Highway. So, uh, right in our um, listening area as well, uh, 954-637-0750. We're going to take a quick break and on the other side talk a little bit about vitamin injections with Dr. Vittenberga on the You and Your Doctor show. Getting older is not for sissies. That's what one of my patients says. And it's funny, but it's true. Live long enough and you'll get arthritis, skin cancer, probably one of the common chronic diseases like CHF, COPD, diabetes. At Old County Healthcare, we teach you how to manage your disease. We make sure you know how to take your medications and how to recognize signs and symptoms before requiring hospitalization, no matter how many visits it takes. You didn't move to Florida to be sick. You moved here to enjoy the rest of your life. And that's exactly what our team of nurses, therapists, and aides at All County Healthcare help you do. All County Healthcare, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954-717-7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 2009096. You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470, and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. And we're back on the You and Your Doctor show, Living a Longer and Healthier Life with Dr. Frank Wittenberga. He's opening the Living Well Med Spa in Fort Lauderdale, and I do have the address here. I know you gave it out, doctor, but I want to give it out, 5250 north federal highway in fort lauderdale 
954-637-0750 or any of the information I'm talking about is on livingwellmedspa.com. Dr. Wittenberger, we were talking before the break a little bit about injections, and I wanted to just say um, to the listening public and the viewing public, I mean, to have someone do um, an injection into your body that's not certified, not medically trained is, is not a great idea. I'm in PR and and um, the news now since 1999. I've been a professional writer, and I've read so many stories in South Florida about people um, injecting stuff into other people not being certified. People have died um, from getting bad fillers, from um, the fix-a-flat that was used in some types of um, kind of um, butt-enhancing surgery as well. And, um, you know, it, it kind of sounds funny, but it's not because if someone loses their life, you definitely want to always have a certified physician um, do inject injectables or someone certified in the medical field right. and um here you got a general surgeon with competitive prices here in south florida and some of the other injectables you you do and i know this because um my mom actually takes a b12 that's important uh for baby boomers because sometimes there's a b12 deficiency right right you know and and so b12 um helps to create you know create red blood cells and and it's important it usually gets absorbed in the stomach we've seen over time, there's been you know increasing needs as as people um, get older that they don't absorb it as well in their stomach, um, and so there's a demand you know there's a need for it, um, and so um, people will get what's called pernicious anemia if they have a deficiency in in vitamin B12, and so but one of the things that we see is is a lot of people have had weight reduction surgery because they have a reduction in their stomach and the, the absorption capacity in in that area for the B12, uh, you know, where it's normally, you know, you normally have the factors that help absorb it, you lose that. And so people, you know, tend to have, you know, the, the risk of being, you know, having a B12 deficiency. So certainly it's something that not everybody needs it. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, I think it's, it's you know, it, there's people that, you know, will have a B12 deficiency, there's people that are just fine. But, you know, again, I think reliably getting B12 injections, you know, make sure that you're, you know, you're getting the level that you need. Mm -hmm. And you offer a B12 package. That's neat for the whole year. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. So, once like, a month? Yep, once a nice. month. Nice. So, yeah, it's, as, you know, as I said, it's really, you know, for the people that need it, it's it's good to get on a regular schedule. It's it's kind of like taking your medicine, you know, every day. Um, but with, you know, B12 injections, it's kind of, you know, once a month is, is kind of a, a good treatment schedule. Now, if people know it, do they have to be referred by their primary care? Can they just come in if they've already been told if they've had it? Oh, no, they, they can come in. You know, oh, okay. And again, we can, you know, nice. we can work with their primary care doctors. Too. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, um, but, uh, you know, again, I think that we want to, you know, look at kind of, again, bringing, you know, in, in bringing in the, uh, the treatments that are, you know, people are looking for that really, you know, can help them kind of feel kind of, you know, overall improve their wellness. And so, you know, we see that, you know, in terms of, you know, IV therapies are becoming more and more important and looking at kind of where people have deficiencies. And and again, I think that there's a balance in terms of, you know, a lot of, you know, if you take too many vitamins, they don't necessarily do any good. But again, a lot of vitamins that you get in pills that are, you know, over the counter at, at the pharmacy, again, they don't necessarily get absorbed into your system and, and get, you know, passed out, you know, excreted so so you're not really getting the benefit of those vitamins even if you're if you're taking them and that's certainly that's the reason why you know you can take all the b12 you want and if you're not absorbing it correctly you need to get it in a in a form and in a, you know in a, through a mechanism that you're going to be able to get the true benefit of it so even if you take you know the same level of b12 by mouth and you know it's not going to be effective so huh, never thought of it like that that does make sense though um and then this is actually what i've um, been waiting to talk about is Actually, the the facial skincare products and uh, you, people may find that surprising, but I've had acne my whole life. I mean, I all the way back that I can think of when I was on Accutane and Retin A, and that stuff was so hard on the face and system. Uh, you go out in the sun, you just get very uh, burned and very bad. Yeah. And then I got into the Stridex and Clear Cell, which I still use today. Um, Kind of just because I like to see what is the the dirt come off my face after a long day. I, I like to see that the clear cell picks it up. You know, you look at it like you hold it to a white piece of paper. Oh, my, that was on my skin. I'm glad I cleaned my face. But then you go outside in the sun again, 
And it just, it's like, oh, it just tears up your face because of that, whatever acid's in there. So what can you offer in terms of uh, cleansers, exfoliators? I see there's um, all kinds of options on your on your website. And they're, again, very affordable because these sizes are much bigger than what I'm getting at the, uh, the, the grocery store. Yeah. So, you know, again, I think that the first thing is looking at, you know, kind of is the treatment that you're going to get going to be, you know, effective. And so, you know, making sure you have it in a concentration that's high enough and, and in a delivery system that's, that's efficient enough. So, you know, I think that you want to get into a skincare regimen that, that is kind of regular, you know, a regular system that works for you. And so, you know, again, I, I, tend to have the same problems when I use st stronger cleansers that, you know, for one, you know, it really tears up your face. And for two, it does make you photosensitive. So I think, you know, you want to get into the using a, a cleanser and a toner that, you know, work, work well with your skin. And then, you know, certainly um, once you've kind of cleansed off and exfoliated the skin, then you're able to use, you know, some of the products that, that will be able to have a, a deeper, you know, impact. And so, you know, vitamin C serum, you know, is, is one of the things that helps. It helps, you know, kind of decrease any any extra pigmentation you might have. You know, as we get older, we tend to develop age spots and, and um, you know, the, it helps to fade those. Um, and then, um, uh, you know, there's, we, we certainly, you know, as you said on our website, we have, you know, a lot of regenerative products that, you know, again, are all aimed at, you know, improving the, the collagen and the, the glycosaminoglycans in the, in the dermis of the skin um, and really, you know, helping to rejuvenate the skin. And then, you know, again, the, the, the other thing that, you know, we offer is, is really the most important thing, you know, probably out of all of these things is, is sun protection fact, you know, uh, skin care uh, with sun protection mm -hmm. because, um, you know, ultimately, a lot of what we see, you know, particularly in South Florida, because we have so much sun exposure, is that, you know, you get skin damage over, you know, not over just months or weeks. It's over years and years of skin, expo you know, of being exposed to, to high levels of UV radiation. And so it's really important to have good, you know, SPF uh, protection so that when you go out in the sun, you know, that you're, you're not damaging your skin anymore. And that all that good that you're doing in terms of doing treatments on a daily basis is really you know, really being saved and, you know, you know, you're not making backwards progress. And, and again, you know, I think that the other issue is that, you know, in this day and age, as, as we, you know, live older and older, the problems with skin cancers and, you know, really um, developing um, basal cell carcinomas or squamous cell carcinomas or even melanomas, you know, really are, are becoming, you know, more and more of, a, of an issue. And, and, you know, so I think we've got to look at it, you know, we want to take care of our skin and then we also want to protect it from the, the sun and, and possibly, you know, some of these cancers that can develop, you know, years down the road if, if we don't take proper care of it. That's a great point, too. I've had, um, well, listeners will know this. I've told this story a few times. Um, driver's side melanoma. Mm -hmm. uh, friend, a peer of mine, a friend of mine in the, in the PR business, TV business, um, got it from just driving to work the same way every, every day. And actually had had it cut out, and it was it, it took a while to get it out. I thought it was like a two year process. I mean, that thing was just like a lot of his cheeky. He's doing fine today, but um, that yeah. when I saw that, wow, we got to be careful. And the second part of that point, I'm from Jupiter, Florida originally, and I'm one of those. In my youth, I spent so much time in the sun, fishing, spear fishing, on the beach for the first twenty five years of my life, and never even thought of sunscreen until i got maybe in my 30s yeah and, and again it was you yeah. know in in you know my generation and probably to a lesser extent your yeah. generation you're younger than me um but you know it was you know we we were the bando soleil you uh -huh. know you know <laughs> everybody should be you know as dark bronzed as as they possibly could the baby oil yeah the baby oil the, the, baby the, oil. the little reflectors that yeah. people had so you know again i think <laughs> You know, hopefully, you know, we're, we're learning from our mistakes. And, you know, again, it's not too late to protect your skin. And, and certainly, you know, we want to pass that on to, you know, the younger generations as, as time goes on in terms of, you know, being able to, to have that skin protection. But, you know, what you were talking about, you know, driver's side uh, skin cancer or driver's side melanoma, you know, having when you, you know, when you're sitting in the driver's side of the car, your left side is exposed to the sun, um, you know, and much more than the right. We see it in truck drivers, particularly, you know, oh, where, where never that, thought was, of that was uh, really a very prevalent thing to see, you know, where, you know, I, I was, I, I treated melanomas for years and years and years. And, you know, 
saw a number of truck drivers who come in and, you know, invariably it's on the left side. So unbelievable. Yeah. I never even knew that term until a few years ago. And yeah, it really happens. So uh, we're here with Dr. Frank Wittenberger, livingwellmedspa.com um, is the website. Ton of information there, 954-637-0750. Located um, right in the east side of Fort Lauderdale. Great location, 5250 North Federal Highway, Fort Lauderdale. Um, and I know actually uh, Dr. Wittenberger um, from his days that he's been a chief medical officer here at, I believe, two institutions in South Florida alone. Yeah. At, um, Florida Medical Center yeah. most recently. And where are you at? Jackson most recently, too? Just uh, in yeah. passing. So. At Jackson, too, um, as well. And um, we're going to have Dr. Vindenberger here for a little while longer. If you want to call in, one one eight 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 five six five 1470 I still have so much to talk to him about. But if you have any uh, appropriate questions, we'll get them on the air. Or, like I said before, uh, check us out on, on Facebook Live. I've had some questions come in there. I see the viewers on the screen right now so just type them in and like i said if they're appropriate and um you know the doctor can talk a little bit about um the issue um that'd be great as well um one other thing i want to talk to you about because um i was first described as your someone said uh check out dr finnenberger's facing facebook page he's he's open a, a living med spa and i oh i took a look and the first few words i saw was anti-aging and rejuvenation um, and that's what you're obviously focusing on, but that is so important uh, right now. Again, with this baby boomer population, um, um, as well. And I never really looked at anti aging medicine until I got near forty years old. To, to be honest with you, and uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about it now. Um, I first was, and and correct me if I'm wrong, but I first saw anti aging medicine. Um, in the form of, and it's on the tip of my tongue, and it was used in professional sports, is a, that um, hormone, that growth hormone um, that was used for a while. I, I don't creatine know. Creatine? Yeah, well, creatine first yeah. in the gym. Yeah. And then, um, it's on, I'll, I'll think of it. But sure. tell me a little bit about what you offer for anti-aging, because I see on here stem cell therapy gel, really? That's available? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Wow. So, so we have, um, yeah, we do have stem cell ger therapy gel. You know, I think that there's... there's Human a, growth hormone, yeah. that's what I was thinking yeah. of, there's, HGH. Yeah, and so that HGH is a normally occurring hormone in... In, in the in, body. In, in the body. And huh. so, you know, again, it's, it's, it's kind of, as we age, we tend to have variations in terms of, you know, kind of what our hormone levels are, and they tend to trail off. You know, particularly, that's what we see in terms of, you know, testosterone levels and, you know, in terms of post-hormonal hormonal women with, you know, their estrogen levels. And, you know, again, we also have to put that in the context, you know, and again, this is where kind of mm -hmm. background in general surgery uh, comes in because we, you know, we spent years doing estrogen replacement and, and said this is the best thing since sliced bread and, you know, just, uh, you know, giving it out and then found out that we did see an increase in breast cancer and uterine cancer with, with those sorts of treatments. So, you know, you have to be, you know, these are not panaceas and they're not to be, you know, treated lightly. But I think at the same time, we want to, you know, kind of naturally, you know, be able to, to recreate certain things that, that uh, you know, your body is, you know, leading you to not feel, you know, as good as you possibly could. And so, you know, whether that's looking at hormonal, you know, testosterone replacement treatments, uh, you know, one of the areas that we're, you know, really interested in is platelet-rich plasma, um, where basically... Um, it, it has a lot of the hormonal factors. And so what you do with that is you, you take blood out of, the, uh, out of the, the patient, out of the pe person who's being treated. So it's their blood. There's no risk of, mm -hmm. you know, kind of any, anybody else's uh, blood. But what you do is you spin it down in a centrifuge and you take the, the platelet-rich plasma, which is a, a layer of plasma that doesn't contain the, the red blood cells and, you know, some of the other components. But it's kind of concentrated in terms of, the uh, having the ability to you know have those growth hormone factors and you know a lot, there's been a lot of research into to injecting that into joints to see if you know that helps rejuvenate joints and that's not an area that you know really we've looked at but but certainly in terms of facial rejuvenation you know working with plate, platelet rich plasma in terms of the you know the the treatment uh, uh, in terms of micro needling it into the skin you know to to really bring that those growth hormones down to the level of the, you know, the dermis where, where you can get facial rejuvenation and bring those factors where they need to be. And so, you know, again, that's, 
what, uh, uh, of course, Kim Kardashian, you know, the Kardashians are kind of a curse and a blessing to a lot mm-hmm. of this stuff because they certainly brought it to the, the attention of the mainstream. But on the other hand, you know, a lot of it is is uh, kind of, you know, it sometimes it's, it gets overhyped. And so she had the what they call a vampire facial, you know, and that's mm-hmm. a trade name of, you know, in terms of the, the treatment. But but it basically, you know, they use that plasma and, and inject it into the face. And so, you know, looking at those sorts of treatments, how can we, you know, create, you know, kind of looking at all the things? It's so it's it's some of it is just kind of purely kind of looking at cosmetic approaches in terms of, you know, it used to be people when we first started giving Botox, you know, they wanted to look, you know, like either they, you know, were paralyzed in their forehead. And, you know, most people nowadays want to look natural. They want to mm-hmm. have, you know, they, they want to look younger. They want to have relaxed, you know, uh, facial facial musculature, so they do, don't have the wrinkling, they don't have the elevens, they don't have the crow's feet or the the furrowing of the brow, and so all those things are you know tend to bother people. But at the same time, they they don't want to look like you know somebody who's you know kind of a, a plastic plastic surgery nightmare. They want to look like a natural person who's you know really kind of looks like you know kind of you, but without the things that bother you. Yeah, it's definitely evolved. And uh, nice uh, with the Kardashians there. They were influencers. That's the word we're looking for, <laughs> PR. <laughs> influencers. So, uh, no, but that is um, a good point. And what I like about it, to be honest with you, is you're using your own blood. It's nothing from the outside. Like, it's your own blood spun down while you're in the office mm-hmm. and inserted back in. What could be better than your own, what, you know, your own makeup, your own chemistry? I mean, right. what could be better for the body than that, than introducing something else? Right, right. So and, that's... you know, and again, I think that, you know, again, as you mentioned, you know, when we do, you know, when you do need to use products that are not, um, you know, from yourself, but, you know, again, the products, it's important to get, you know, that we get, you know, from from Allergan and from, you know, uh, Revenus and, you know, really the, you know, Galderma, you know, really looking at the, 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 the brand names. And we're fortunate now that we live in a, you know, a time where, you know, there's there's choices in terms of, you know, the providers of those substances. And they both, they you know, they all work, you know, whether it's dermal fillers or, or neurotoxins, they work, you know, in similar fashions. But, you know, it does give us options in terms of, you know, different treatments and different, you know, opportunity for, you know, different pricing. So Fantastic. We're here with Dr. Frank Wittenberg, a living well med spa in Fort Lauderdale. Dr. Wittenberg, I want to ask you if you'll be nice enough to stay for one more segment. Oh, sure. I'm sure I didn't know if you needed to, to run and uh, had another uh, something on your schedule. I was waiting for the ER doctor to call, and he may have got tied up. But let's take a quick break on uh, the You and Your Doctor show, and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, Living Well Med Spa with Dr. Wittenberg on the You and Your Doctor show. County Healthcare Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare Inc. still does it the old fashioned way, where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954 717 7027. And remember, Medicare home care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 2009096. Hi, I'm Deanna Barron, RN, with All County Health Care. You know how I know that I've done a good job? We say goodbye. After you understand the medications you take, once you know that gaining two pounds in a day means you should call the doctor, when your wound is healed, when you can use your nebulizer all by yourself, when the goals that you and your all-county healthcare team of nurses, therapists, and aides established are met, we say goodbye. Very nice to meet you, and I hope I never see you again. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. 
You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470, and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. And we're back on the You and Your Doctor show with Dr. Frank Wittenberger of, I just want to get this right here, I got there. I was saying it right, Living Well Med Spa, um, a new anti-aging and rejuvenation um, beauty spa in Fort Lauderdale. 5250 North Federal Highway, 9546370750. Dr. Wittenberger, you were telling me a little bit about the build out. I mean, this is a really nice uh, place that you're opening. Oh, yeah. Tell us a little about it. So, well, you know, it's it's probably, we're, we're going to grow into it. So it's definitely, it's a, it's a good space. It was, um, it was actually, it had good bones to begin with and good structure. So, so, you know, it's, it's, it's great for me because, you know, not only do you get to play physician, but, you know, I, I get to be, um, you know, electrician and plumber and carpenter mm-hmm. and a little bit of all that too. But, but, uh, really the, uh, the, the place, you know, like I said, it's, it's, you know, really you want to feel like you're, you know, getting a, a, the full experience in terms of coming in and, and really feeling like you're in a, a comfortable place. And, and so, you know, really, we're really trying to make it feel like, you know, a, a, a good experience for the patients and, and really, so it's, it's more the, the whole experience. And so, um, you know, we, we, uh, have put in a lot of work on it and, um, you know, we're real happy with how it's looking. So, you know, we're going to have to have you down there soon. Definitely. And we'd love to come down. Maybe, uh, we can even bring the whole show down there. I know there's something in the works with, uh, Freddie, the producer. So hopefully we can take the show on the road one time, maybe for your grand opening. I mean, I know it's, it's close. So, yeah. um, but, uh, Dr. Wittenberger, is I want to talk a little bit about uh, your resume because it's one of the uh, most amazing resumes that I've, I've seen. I know it's on your website, but you are a graduate of Harvard University and the University of Massachusetts Medical School. So that's UMass's medical school. I'll tell you something. People from Boston and the New York area, I've, I've met people from all over the world, some of the smartest people I've ever met in my life. I don't know if that starts in grade school and just goes all the way up, but you got great schools there and great colleges, and you went to the best. I mean, you went to Harvard and, and UMass, um, completed surgical residency and three years of research as well. MBA, you have an MBA from UMass at Amherst. Yep. Uh, you own your own private practice in Dallas, Texas, where you served as chief medical officer of Methodist Charlton Medical Center. Wow. And after accepting um, the chief medical position down here, you moved your family down to South Florida. We're so lucky to have you. <laughs> no, really. Yeah, I mean, well, I my, mean it. My kids were actually, they're big sailors. And so they, uh, that we were actually uh, reached the point where we were traveling to Miami very frequently. And so, you know, it, it, we reached the point where we said, you know, this is kind of where we want to be. And so really, you know, we've been very happy being in South Florida and, and really just, you know, it's been the right place for us. Although, my my older son who's a sailor as well he's he's he uh he's a freshman over at trinity college in dublin ireland so oh, neat. so he um he, but he's sailing over there although he complains he said he did <laughs> say you know in the middle of the winter when they were out sailing that you know he he was thinking about coming back to go to university of miami but <laughs> he, <laughs> he worked through it so <laughs> nice so that's gonna make him tougher right yeah I it's, mean. it's well you know i think you know every time he he says that it's it's cold up in in dublin and they get yeah, they got an inch of snow or something. I just tell them it's not as bad as Boston is right oh, now. Oh <laughs> yeah, I mean Boston's had a tough year with tough few years with the winter up there. Oh yeah. And my mom was transferred from down South Florida to um, Hartford, Connecticut for ten years. Whoa. I mean, between New York City and and all the way up through Maine, Nova Scotia, you get some wicked weather. Yes, that's the right word. Wicked. Yeah, wicked. <laughs> <laughs> Nor'easters. You know, though, I got to go 10 times to Fenway Park when she was up there, though. Wow. And her her uh, company would get the same seats every time. I've never sat anywhere at Fenway Park except near Pesky's Bowl, which I don't mind. No. That's the only place I've ever sat in the whole park. I'm actually going back up September 6th. I'm seeing Pearl Jam at Fenway, so it's oh, going to be pretty be neat. Yeah, I, I, I'm a lifelong Pearl Jam fan, so... Finally got the tickets, so now I just got to figure out how to get up there on Labor Day weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't bought the tickets yet, but anyways, that's a story for another day. 
Well, I want to um, thank you again so much for coming to the the program. Um, definitely, um, everyone needs to check out um, your Living Well Med Spa because um, for aesthetics, treatments, product lines, um, you are the you are the person to visit. I mean, the amount of information we just got on the, done on the forty minute show is is amazing. And I, I'll tell listeners, I'll stand by this: the prices are are really competitive from what I've seen in South Florida. So I think everyone um should take a look and um come on down but again thanks for uh, coming on the show you're always welcome i just want to um let you know that as well i mean we talked about everything today from peels fillers um injectables mm -hmm. um anti-aging medicine um i didn't get too much into the human growth hormone i mean i told you told me a little bit about anti-aging medicine but is that something that's available that's that probably you know it it's certainly is it's yeah. not really our focus so, okay so you know yeah, we're gonna look at more you know kind of beauty uh, rejuvenation yeah, but also you know anti-aging and uh probably you know more uh, uh estrogen testosterone type mm -hmm. uh re re replacements rather than the the actual uh you know yeah, those sorts of hormones. So. And the stem cell, that 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 stuff's amazing too, as well. Absolutely. I'm just looking at the the list is amazing. Well, I want to um, thank you again for coming on the show. Again, it's Living Well Med Spa nine five four six three seven zero seven five zero. Uh, grand opening is right around the corner. Yep. We you know we check our Facebook site or our website. We'll have the the exact date up. Um, and you know we're we're gonna have a little bit of a celebration and. And uh, certainly looking at having discounts, uh, so uh, it should be some good deals to be had. Oh yeah, get those uh, in introductory discounts. You can't beat those, and they, you got some great plans. I know we talked a little bit about the B12 annual package, but what a time to get in uh, to the spa right when they start and get introductory discount. Their number is nine five four six three seven zero seven five zero. Remember, um, check them out, livingwellmedspa.com. We'll be right back on the You and Your Doctor show. Hi, my name is Deanna Barron. I'm an RN with All County Healthcare. I used to work for this huge corporate owned home health agency, and I was always worried that they wouldn't let me make enough nursing visits to be sure that your wound was fully healed or that you were completely comfortable checking your husband's blood sugar level and giving him the correct dose of insulin or that your mom's lingering cough was the end of her bronchitis, not the beginning of a new episode. The owner of All County Healthcare always says, give the patient what they need, and he means it. At All County Healthcare, I see my patients until their goals are met, and I never worry. I hope you never need a nurse to come to your home, but if you do, tell your doctor, I want All County Health Care. All County Health Care, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward Counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Health Care, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way, where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954-717-7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 2009096. You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470, and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. And we're back, and we have a treat for you. We're here with All County Healthcare Incorporated's Vice President Lou Biasi. We're going to talk a little bit about COPD. I know this is the third, uh, no, the third largest killer in the U.S. I believe right now, chronic, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Right. Go ahead, Lou. Tell us about 
uh, David, explain a little bit about COPD and what's happening today in the hospital and the hospital settings. Well, COPD, as you know, it's, it's, it's a non-curable disease, and who who has it out there? You know, I know you're having a tough time, and it, 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 you tried everything. You're probably on an oxygen, and you're trying to get some relief. But what has happened in the last three or four years have been a device called called an IPV unit, it's a pulmonary percussion percussion air system, and what that does that helps alleviate the mucus that's that's caught within the in the tract that you can't bring up a lot. And if you're in a hospital, and what happens in most hospitals right now, the readmission rate for COPD is tremendous. It's costing it's costing Medicare fortunes and fortunes of money. Medicare has asked and asked the hospitals, let's how can we basically stop some of these readmissions? And most of the readmissions are caused for respiratory disorders like COPD. Well, five years ago, we made a major investment in a unit called an IPV unit, Interpoint, which is the same unit that they use for children with cystic fibrosis, or they use in the hospitals as, you, as you're trying to get cured so you get, can be out of the hospital within a certain period of time. What happens, they discharge you, and within 15 days, again, you're back into the hospital. All kind of health care, we've done studies on it. We have the only company right now in South Florida it has five of these units available to bring into the home so that the patient now can get to some relief from his problems of respiratory, his respiratory problems. We've had a situation where we had a couple, an 80 year old man who was on oxygen. We gave him the treatments. He got seven treatments the first week, four treatments the second week. And what happened, David, it was amazing. He went out swimming in his pool, came home, made love to his wife. And the wife said, I want to buy that machine. <laughs> <laughs> she wants it in the house. But there's many stories like this. What's happening? We've done studies on it. And if you, if you, if you have that problem and you think and you, or your homebound status, ask your doctor, hey, doc, I'd like to try this IPV unit that all Connie has. Is there any way you can order it for me? It's being ordered. Uh, now, we went down and we presented this to uh, uh, Cleveland Clinic. The, the pulmonologist down there, Dave, was so impressed. They said, we want this in our outpatient, our outpatient pulmonary center. We put it into the outpatient pulmonary center. People have been using it, and they find tremendous relief, right? Uh, Florida Medical Center has called us. Can you help us stop the readmissions? So all the individuals that are out there, if any case managers are listening right now or any doctors are listening right now, you know, give this, if you have a COPD patient, Who's chronic and basically is in and out of hospitals? Give this pro, give this protocol a try. I think, and once you try it, you'll see the relief. We just did a patient, and if you go to our website, there's a Mr. Khan who has written something on the website, and it indicates that we tried it on his mother, who was supposedly supposed to go to uh, hospice. The doctor wanted to go to hospice. She said no. She wanted to see her granddaughter get married. So the doctor ordered a nebulizer. We ended up putting the IPV unit to work with her. And before she went back in two weeks, and the doctor said, called me, said, I couldn't believe it without my own eyes. She said, if I didn't see it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't believe how she tremendously has improved. Her oxygen levels improved. Well, she went to a granddaughter's wedding. She danced with the granddaughter. And, you know, she finally succumbed about a month or two later. But the IP <coughs> unit, IPV unit kept her alive, right? Wow. There are many stories like that, right? We have a lot of stories like that. So we're talking about specifically one thing that all county does different than any other agency out there. So if you're suffering from respiratory or suffering from any kind of COPD, and you're a frequent visitor in and out of the hospital, tell your doctor you want to try this particular Therapy, right? And I think you'll find some great, great, uh, tremendous, tremendous amount of results for your benefit that, they, hey, at least I can get up, walk around, maybe get off the oxygen, you know, for a while, see how this thing works. Quality of life. Right. And we've done studies. And if you go to our website, WWL <laughs> County Healthcare, David, if you go to the website right now, you, you go to, if you go to that website, you'll see some of the studies. There's a study that we did at the, um, I think it was a, a veteran center, veterans clinic out of Wyoming that was having major problems. Mm -hmm. And the results were just amazing. We kept, 
we kept we did studies uh, when we first got when we got the units. We've done studies. We kept patients out of the hospital for over 12 months. That were going in within 15 days after being discharged would be back into the hospital in 15 days. So when you look at all these programs, right? And you know, everyone has a certain program that they have. Home care. Everybody, everybody is fighting for that home care business. But this is something that we made a major investment in. Hundreds of thousands of dollars we invested in these units where no other home company has them or can have them because we have exclusivity on them. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be honest with you, it's it's just given. It's going constantly. The five units are going out there constantly. I, we have a trained pulmonary team, respiratory pulmonary team that goes out and applies this. So again, that's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about trying to keep you out of the hospital, trying to keep patients out of the hospital. I, I don't know how many millions and millions of dollars it's costing right now at Medicare, just in the state of Florida, for the readmissions for COPD, right? And it's, uh, it, we have all the statistics. We have all the statistics. We have a book with every single hospital who has the statistics. We know what Delray Hospital has. We know what Boca Community Hospital has. We know what Northwest has. All the local hospitals have a tremendous amount of readmissions within 15 days. Friend of mine, 86-year-old, 88-year-old person, she had pneumonia. She was in and out of Boca Community, I don't know how many times, within, within the first month, she was in and out of Boca Community at least four or five times for three days, four days, five days. It cost the, it's cost the hospital about six, thirty dollars to $60,000 for each patient that's here admitted. The average stay is three to four days again, okay, before they get back up and get back out. Well, 15 more days, they're back in, right? We want to stop that. We want to stop that reoccurrence. So if doctors are listening, patients are listening, family members are listening, if young people are seen and you know your dad or you know someone that has COPD, tell them to call. Call All County Healthcare. We'll go to our website. If we have to, we'll give you all the information. Our phone number over there is 954-717-7027. You know, call, talk to one of our case managers, explain to you the problem. We will try to set it up with your doctor to see if we can get you primarily onto the program. If you are homebound, you know, you're covered under Medicare. Medicare is just covered under Part A. There's no charge. Home care is no charge. It's, it's a, you've been granted that right under Social Security Reform Act. It's under covered under Part A. So there's no charge for home care. People might think, well, there's a charge. How much are you going to pay for this thing? As a matter of fact, each person that gets this treatment, it costs all county health care $100 just for the mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. So, again... With, with, if you have that problem, you have any respiratory problem, you, family member, you know, your dad, your mom, your aunt, someone, call All County Healthcare, 954-717-7027. Go to our website. Look what people have written about the treatments they received and how well they've done after the treatments. Our website, again, David, is... AllCountyHealthcare.com. I'm actually on it right now. There's a ton of information on it. The, tremendous amount and there's studies are on it too so if you're a doctor and you want to go to our website or your case manager go to our website you know they talk about trying to stop these readmissions we're the only company that has it so they should be you know let's be realistic if they really want to stop them they got to be calling all county health care mm -hmm. you actually have a copd care tab there that has a whole bunch of information, bronchitis treatment, pneumonia treatment, emphysema treatment right. as you, well. And have you seen the respiratory team is like that? I see it, and you have a respiratory therapist on staff. Ed, Ed Salazar, he's been yes. a respiratory therapist for 40 years. That's fantastic. Ed is probably one of the best around, right? So he, he, he basically, again, he engineers this whole program for us to make sure that the patients get the right care. Well, thanks, Lou, for jumping on uh, the You and Your Doctor Living a Longer and Healthier Life show. And uh, have a good night, South Florida. All right. Thank you, David. That's it. Thank you for letting us share with you a longer and healthier lifestyle.
If you have a doctor or are a doctor and wish to be on the show, call Amp2TV at 866-244-5422 and we will put you on the air as soon as possible. Tune in next week for more information on living longer and having a healthier life. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored...